Dogen 3 for letting us know our stream went down. I'm sure you were riveted by my explanation of what was going on in this game. So sit down and enjoy the show. All right, so what I was saying was, and I'm not sure where we cut off exactly, but what I was saying is I'm going to turn on attack data, display combo state, and input display. And we're going to go through each and every single uh, special move and then the combo system of this game. And then uh, I think after that we might take a little break. Um, and maybe later tonight I'll show a little bit more and then you guys can fight against me and some of the people here at Mint Potion. I know Robbie's itching to get out there. Uh, ben might be back later. Uh, he'd be itching to go out and, and test his metal against you guys. So this should be fun, all right? Let's do it! All righty. So here we go. Input display is over here. Right next to Jago. This lets me know what buttons I'm pushing. This is really good because you also want to make sure that your controller works before you get into this. Because it would be really bad if you did not have an operational controller. You would just be sitting around not doing anything or doing the wrong thing and not knowing why. All right, and then we over, over here, we have the damage, combo damage, attack speed. There's three, th for the combo damage, there's two, two sections. There's one that is the potential, and there's the other one that is the uh, actual damage. And then we have attack speed. Uh, there's the, uh, I believe it's the um, uh, startup, active, and uh, finishing frames. I don't know if finishing is the right word. Recovery, that's the right word, recovery frames. And then we have attack properties, which we will get into. So, Killer Instinct. How do you play this game, and why would you play this game? One, you play it because it's freaking awesome and it looks great. But how do you play it? All right, basic combo. Super basic Street Fighter combo in the entire universe. We're gonna go in with a jump attack. Any jump attack, just casual Virtua Fighter and Mortal Kombat 3 on my old Sega Saturn. Oh, okay, Dojin, don't worry about it. Uh, this game is actually, if you have a Windows 10 machine, uh, bless you, and bless your heart, but if you do, uh, you can get this game for free. You can download this. It's, I think it's like 30-something gigabytes, so it should be ready by Wednesday. But uh, no, you should definitely be able to download it in a night, uh, maybe a couple hours, and be ready to play. And as I was saying earlier, we probably will be having uh, some challenges later against some other people. So, um, yes. So, basic combos. Basic, basic combos. Boom, boom. Basic. Boom, boom. Basic. A combo is when you string two attacks together and your opponent does not have time to recover. That's right. That means he, if I hit him with this one, he's not going to be able to block the second because he's still doing a recovery. And we can see this here. Damage is 3.4. Not sure what that means. And 1.1. No idea what that means. Uh, I assume the 1.1. Let's see. Bam. All right. No, we just want one. Bam. Okay. So the 1.1 seems to be the basic attack there. Uh, and then we got a 10, 10 points there for something else. We'll figure that out. And combo damage, well, we didn't really do a combo because we just tapped him in the face once. So we're not getting any combo damage, but the speed here. So it's four frames on startup, two active frames. Okay, so four frames is literally the frames of which the game is refreshing at. All right, when, when creating a fighting game, one of the most important systems in, in a fighting game is time. Time itself. You're constantly trying to play with time. Uh, and the best way to do that, translating time into gaming stuff, is through frames. You can count your frames. If you're running your game at 30 frames a second, then you know how many frames you're coming out every second. If you're running it at 60, then once again, you know. But if you're getting wonky ones, then it's kind of hard. And so, a lot of these fighting games try to keep a very stable frame rate. So that way the players don't have to guess too much as to how fast something is going to be or how it's going to recover. So that's the most basic. Killer Instinct is 60 frames per second, which I find to be perfect for fighting games. Uh, I believe Mortal Kombat is as well. Street Fighter is. Uh, Street Fighter V. I wouldn't say the original Street Fighter, but certainly Street Fighter V. Um, Guilty Gear, XR Revelator is probably also, and Blast Blue. I'm um, just throwing names out there, you know. Uh, you can look them up. They're quite fun. Um, so yeah, they're all about 60 frames. So we know that the attack speed of this, in order for this move to start up, boop, it takes four frames to start up. Um, it'll be active for only two frames, and then 
it will be, it'll take nine frames for your character to recover. So if somebody, if they block for some reason and the frame recovery is too much, then you'll be recovering and they can come up and poke you right between the eyes, which is awesome. Uh, but the advantage is four frames, which is pretty, pretty cool. And I assume that's on hit since I'm hitting the other player. And the attack properties is it can chain. Chain means that you can just keep doing this and they'll connect. Boom, 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 right? Seems pretty cool. I mean, if I... It's pushing him away, but I'm sure if it didn't, it'd be super cheaterous and the game would be broken. But nonetheless, it pushes him away, and I can still chain or link these two together. Link. That's a good one. Hard knockdown on the throw. Oh, we'll have to get into that. That's pretty nuts. Okay, so kick. No attack properties there. No attack properties there. No attack properties there. None there, or there. Oh, that one has a chain. So I can chain two of those together. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's get into special moves. We have our Endo Kuken, which we went through a little bit earlier. Let me change the background so you have something a little nicer to listen to than some guy on a whistle, whistling whistles. There we go, we got a nice landscape. That's actually from Killer Instinct 1. This is the Sky Stage. One of my favorite stages from the original game. I uh, really enjoyed it. So, yeah, and I have actually, I have these because I pre-ordered this and once again, obsessed with fighting games, obsessed with games in general and breaking them down. So, here we go. We have the first special move, Endokuken. All right, so I can press down, down towards and towards and hit a punch button directly after and I will get that beautiful light show. I'm going to turn off the attack data just so we can get a better view of this. Um, boom. Okay, so now we can see it. Look at that sparkles. Gotta love the Xbox One's particle system. Alright, so that was the light one. You notice I'm pressing the light punch button. And it's taking about a week to get there. Let's press the medium and see what happens. Ooh, that's moving a bit faster. Okay. There we go. That's moving faster. Alright, now the heavy punch. Whoa! Heavy punch is booking it across that level. Just really... Man. I think I'm only allowed to have one on the screen at one time. That would be a game rule, probably because they don't want me just filling this screen with fireballs and never having to touch the opponent. Um, or just having two Jagos throwing fireballs at each other all day while writing Shakespeare. Um, so yeah, that's great. And see, we're getting... We're getting this combo state opener... Opener, opener, okay, we'll have to figure out what that's about. Let's see here. Aha, all right. That means I can do something afterwards. Boom. Boom. Cool. All right, let's do the wind kick. He had a wind kick. What's his wind kick? Let's get back on this side since I would assume most people are playing on first player side, which is typically the left. Um, that one was what? That was uh, down, down away, and away and a kick button. So one of these guys. So let's do the light one first. We'll stand all the way back here. Okay, wait a minute. That's it. Okay. Let's do the medium one. Let's see what happens here. Oh, it travels a little faster, a little, little further. There we go. All right. What about the heavy one? Oh, wow. That is definitely a wind kick. He is definitely breaking wind to get that far down the screen. Boom. You can just hear it. He's just... Man. Too much Tibetan food. And just boop. Awesome. Very cool. All right, so now, what was that laser sword? Laser sword, okay. Well, I'm gonna assume lasers are gonna fly out of his sword. So let's do the light version. Oh no, he just twirls it and it's on fire. Not a whole lot of lasers coming out there. Maybe they should have called that fire sword. All right, medium. Okay, that's the light. That's the medium. Not too much difference as far as I can see. Not too much difference. Let's let's look at the heavy here. Oh, he does it twice. Okay, so he's doing two of these things if you do the heavy version. All right. And our last and most finalist and most ballerist and most amazingest of all the fighting moves ever invented, the Dragon Punch, or in this case, Tiger's Fury. So he's going to muster up the fury of a tiger, and let's see what happens. This is a forward or towards the direction you're facing, down, and a down forward. All right, in the direction you're facing, and then we're gonna press a punch. Now, I'm just gonna say this right now, this is a very tricky move for anybody who's a beginner, okay? 
you're going to get frustrated. You're going to be throwing these things out. You're going to be throwing, you're going to be doing it and you're just going to get a punch. Or you're going to jump. Or you're going to do all kinds of stuff. Stick with it. Trust me. Stick with it. Practice for like a, an hour a day if you can. Half hour a day. Get some really good sleep, right? Because in order to learn these things and to retain them, you need to get a good night's sleep. Come back the next day and practice again. And I, sh I guarantee you within three days, you should be able to do the Dragon Punch. Or in this case, the Tiger's Fury. The unrivaled fury of the tiger. Is that not amazing? All right, so what does that do? Oh, just uppercuts him in the face. Just, oh, man. Just, oh, pfft. oh, it's everywhere. Yeah, just, oh, man. So this guy's just, this guy's doing some stuff. So he's very much a Ryu. See, Ryu can throw a fireball. Ryu has a hurricane kick, but this guy's got a wind kick, which looks more useful. Uh, because it brings me into the character, the other guy. So that brings me right to his face. Yeah, and I can do stuff with that. Ooh, Linker. Talk about that one maybe later tonight. Um, but he's got the fireball. Let's see, this is a basic Street Fighter combo. We're gonna down medium kick. So down in this kick. And as we're holding down and we come out with this, we're gonna go to for down forward or down towards your opponent and towards your opponent and hit punch. Now, this seems like cheating, but it's perfectly legal and they actually designed these games to kind of do it this way. And we're gonna see if that combos. Boom, it does. All right, that's a basic. Boom, that's a combo and a half. All right, there we go. So now, we know we can do that. Let's add in something else. If I do, oh, interesting. Okay, so if I do a punch, fireball, and a, oh, it's not fast enough. And it's still not fast enough. Oh, there we go. Okay, that was a mistake. That was sloppy button inputs on my end. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, it's tricky. Yeah, totally it's tr tricky. The dragon, the dragon punch or the DP uh, is very tricky. Uh, especially like you, I, I, you know, like when I was younger, I used to be able to do it on this side all day. Just what? I'm just doing dragon punches. Minute I want, got to the other side, it was like, well, I can do it now. But it was just like, bloop, bloop. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I, don't, I can't, I can't, I can't do anything. It sucks. And now I think I've got it down. I think I've got it down. So, I, it's, it's, it is tricky. So, anyway, back to the combos. So, it looks like I can punch, throw, fireball, kick. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. I like that. That means that I don't even have to actually do that to get in. Because I can go in here and do that. Right? This is going to, this is where the recovery comes in. When I kick, he's still reeling back. You see how he's just like, ah, my face! Boom! You should be able to throw another attack in there. So, boom! Bam! And it says light manual. We'll get into that as well uh, later tonight. So this is what we got. We got we got basic combo here. We got a medium punch. We're gonna throw a medium fireball. Oh, that's right. We can hold the fireballs! Boom! Is that really bigger? I don't believe that that is bigger. Okay, that's the normal size. Oh yeah, that's bigger. That's like 200% bigger. Try to fit that in a small hole. Um, so yeah, we got medium punch, fireball, and we're gonna do a down medium kick. That's just basic, right? Super basic, I know, I know. Super duper basic would be a down medium kick and a fireball. Two head basic combo. But we wanna get up to triple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a medium punch, fireball, down medium kick. Boom. Nope. Nope. Oh man, see, this is where things get tricky. There we go. So we got three, got triple in there. All right, so that's that's a, a basic one. But see, the problem is, homeboy is not not. He's, he's he's just. Even if I do connect with that, he's still standing, looking at me, very very concerned about his health, and very much ready to attack. Right? I mean, look at that. There's nothing going on here. So how are we going to do this? We have openers, which we talked about. Opens a combo. Now in this case, it's the fireball, but we're starting it with the medium punch. So let's just go right into the fireball. All right, there's the fireball. Kick. All right, that's not comboing. Let's try something else. Hmm, let's try the wind kick. Let's do wind kick. Okay. Huh. What if I just push the button right afterwards? Anybody have an idea of what might happen if I just push, keep jamming on some button? What? 
medium auto. Okay, what's happening here? It seems like if I do a special move that's an opener, boom, that's an opener. It says so on his chest, so I'm assuming the game's not lying to me. And then I push another button. Oh, it's a heavy auto. Okay, let's explore this. Let's do this here. Oh, he can do it with his punches. We saw the kicks. Oh, there's the medium. Oh, there's the lights for the kick. And there's the light for the punch. Okay, so... Seems like when the character goes into an opener... They get into a state that allows them to be able to do things they wouldn't be able to do otherwise. What did you just say? The character enters a state... Which is a combo state that allows them to do this. Now, I don't know the programming behind this. I mean, it's probably like... No, that's not what it is. It's probably the character comes in, drinks coffee, and then, you know, sits on the toilet for a while. That might be the actual code that's used. I doubt it, but it could be. But, something is happening here. So we have an, an auto-double. Okay, so that's what an auto-double is. And, and, and we can break down the words here. I'm pressing the button once, and I'm getting two attacks. So it's creating a double attack automatically. Auto-double. Gotcha. Here I am, standing here, repeating the same thing over and over again. Alright. So now I need to make sure I can finish this combo. I want to make sure that when I'm done, this guy's on his butt, and I'm either on an advantage, or I gain some sort of advantage of some kind. So let's do a win kick, and then we'll do a win kick, and an auto double. We'll do mediums. We'll do, well, well you know what, yeah, we'll do mediums. Because that's just kind of medium, right? We don't want to do heavies, because that's too heavy, and lights, that's too light. We want it just right. We're going to do mediums. So we do medium auto double. All right. And then let's see. Let's close it with... Uh, let's see if we can close it with uh, another wind kick. Right? We'll do another medium wind kick. We'll see what happens. All right. So, boom. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Linker. All right. That didn't work. I just want this to end right away. I don't want to do the whole linker thing. I don't want that. So let's try... Um, let's try the laser sword. Ah, uh, another... another linker. Huh. No. No, I don't want that. Let's try an endokuken. Let's try the endokuken. Let's see what that does. Oh, wow. Okay. Now that was great. Let's do the dance here. Let's do a little taunt. What the heck's going on? This is amazing. Alright. Boom. Alright, so if we do... Openers turn into linkers. Okay, yes, Doyen. So this is what we're doing here. When you have an opener, you're obviously not in a combo, right? You're just standing here staring at the other guy, admiring his glistening muscles. That's the opener. When you do an opener to an auto-double, which means you press a button directly after uses uses heavy specials to end combos. Ah, oh, right? Right? Thank you so much, Grim Evolution X. You're more than welcome to, to help me out here. So, anyway, back to this. If we do another fierce attack, right? So this is a fierce attack. You'll see on the this part of the screen you've got the red buttons these are all red buttons this is the fierce attack here's the fierce punch okay i can open a combo boom i can even do a linker boom but if i do another one of these wind kicks that's a fierce ah see i'll finish the combo what a linker is is it's an attack that has a value that is either light or medium if you do a heavy attack, exactly, Mr. Grimm, you're going to end the combo. So if you do a heavy special attack at any point during your combo, you're going to end it. And there are special properties, which I'm sure Grimm Evolution would totally love to fill you in on, and I can do again later. Um, so what we want to do with a linker is, is we want to use anything that is not a fierce or heavy attack. Boom, boom. Right? That's a medium. Boom, that's a light, and then see there's a difference here. Look at this, watch. Boom, boom. I'm, that's a medium linker, and I'm getting two attacks, which allows me to continue the combo, and I get two attacks, and that tells the other guy what's going on, which will be very important later, Doyen. Um, let's do the light one. Boom, one attack. Okay, so that's that's one attack on the lights, but what if... How do we do a heavy linker? How, does anybody know how to do a heavy linker? Somebody's got to know how to do a heavy linker. I will put Cadbury eggs on in the pot 
if you can tell me how to do a heavy length. Does anybody not? No, 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 no. I'm going to give you a few seconds here, and then I'm going to totally spoil the fun. Totally going to do it. Because remember, if you do a heavy attack, and you do another heavy attack, it's going to end it. Right? And if I do a heavy attack, and then I do a medium linker... Oh boy, I think I just showed you guys. I only get two. Hold light or medium button. Yes, brittle. Exactly. Exactly. So this is what you're going to do. Typically when you're doing the linker, you're just tapping the button, you're going to get two, kick, two, two attacks out of a medium, and you're going to get one attack out of a jab. But if you hold either of those, you're going to get a heavy linker. You can't do a heavy linker. Yes, you can. Check this out. One, two, three. How did I do that? I held the button. Exactly. You hold the button that you're pressing for the linker, which is always going to be a medium or light. You just hold it a little longer, and you'll get an extended attack. Now, we know that this endokuken is an ender. We know that the wind kick on a fierce can be an ender. We know the laser sword on a fierce can be an ender. Do you re recommend a fight stick? Okay. That's a deep question. Do what you're comfortable with. All right? First and foremost, do what you are comfortable with. There are some things you can do on a fight stick that you can't do on a, you know, game pad, and some things you can do on a game pad that you can't do on a fight stick. One of my favorite players in this game, he's a cool cat, his name is Hollywood Sleep. He plays on a controller, from what I understand. Uh, and I believe the last time he fought was against Rico Suave, which I love that name, and Rico is humongous. Uh, and I don't mean like he's just, he's just the guy who picks up trucks for a living. Um, he plays, I believe, on a fight stick. So those are pro probably the top two players in this game, and they're using different inputs. There's also something, I believe, called the combo pad, which does not use a joystick at all. It just uses all button inputs. Um, but I will look that up later, and I will let you guys know exactly what that is. Um, but there are many ways to interact with these games. I know somebody that plays this game on a keyboard. I have no idea why. It's insanity, but he does. Cool. He's alright at it, too. So, no biggie. I actually tried playing this uh, game on my... I had a flight stick, a Hotas flight stick, and as a joke, I tried to play this game. Would not recommend. Uh, but still, quite the adventure. Uh, the hitbox, there you go. Yes. It's been 13, it is the hitbox. Yes, I always call it the combo box just because I think the dude that used it a lot was a spinal player and I think he had combo in there somewhere, or maybe not, I'm just making this up. Uh, this is what happens when you get bong resin and uh, beer caught in your head uh, from going to college too many times. Thank you for the reply. Of course, of course. No problem, that's what I'm here for. We're all learning together. And, and, and once again, what we're doing is we're bringing out the concepts of these games, this game in particular for now, because it's free and you guys can totally download this um, on a Windows 10 or Xbox One machine. Because uh, I don't, I, you know, I don't want you guys to have to stress out about, oh, he's playing Street Fighter V and I gotta pay 60 bucks to be able to blah, blah, blah. No, just download this game for free, man. It's all good. So, um, what was I talking about? I think I was talking about, wasn't underpants. I don't think I was talking about underpants. Anyway. So let's get back into the game again. Uh, we're gonna, oh yes, I was talking about how we're breaking this down because games are inspiring. One of the first games that ever inspired me to ever make a video game was Street Fighter II for the Super Nintendo. Uh, when I saw that, I just was mind blown. I couldn't believe the interactions that were going on. Uh, uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, um, Super Metroid. Uh, I didn't really own uh, a console, I had a, uh, the old school Game Boy Brick a long time ago, I played a lot of Turtles in Time. Uh, there's this game Nemesis, Alleyway, Tetris. Um, but those games were more like, for me, I didn't, it didn't really kind of push me to that point where I was like, oh, I'd kind of like to make these. It was more of like, I'll keep busy and ignore my teachers. Um, but when I got a Super Nintendo, which was the first console I ever owned, uh, well, I didn't own it, my parents bought it for me and then I beat them up and stole it from them. Um, but no, uh, the first comp uh, console I ever owned was a Super Nintendo. Um, and uh, some of the first games we got was like Super Mario World and whatnot. And I always thought those games were cool, but Street Fighter really just, like, I just couldn't believe it. Blew my mind. You could totally challenge your friends, your family, um, the dog to play against each other. And there was a definite winner, and it was really interesting to me. So 
that inspired me to eventually make little games myself and now that I'm here after learning how to make games and I'm brushing up on it once again after putting it on hiatus for a little bit um, I really enjoy it and they continue to inspire inspire me to make games um, and all different aspects of, of games uh, so yeah, that's what we're doing. We're going to break down this game, and we could probably break down other games. And as certain projects here, certain game projects are revealed, not that I know of any secret projects that we're doing uh, at Bint Potion. <laughs> we never keep a secret. Uh, but yeah, other secret projects that we're doing stuff, hopefully we can start rolling those out to you and giving that information, and you can start seeing kind of the design proje process, uh, the process of how we put these things together. Ben is doing New Ren. Uh, he's showing you how these models are made. Uh, maybe not this specific amazing model. Um, he's showing you how to rig them, right? Because you know there's got to be bones in there. There's got to be bones in there. Um, and uh, yeah, we got, you know, Jake's doing all the music. Jake, or not Jake's doing all the music for this game, no. But he's doing all the music for the stuff that we're doing now here. Um, and the music in this game is incredible, which I'm sure anybody who's played this game will tell you the music is redonkulous and always has been. Um, so yeah. I think we're going to be ending this a bit soon because I believe we have another streamer maybe coming in in a little bit. So I might get cut off at some point, but let me show you let me show you some ballerisness. And what I mean by that is you have your opener as I showed you. What in the world? Okay, so you have your opener, your auto double, and your ender. Tiger's Fury apparently is an ender. Um, laser Sword can be a linker. Wind Kick can be a linker. And the Fireball is always going to be an ender, and so is dr the Dragon Punch, or what I like to call the Tiger's Fury, or DP. I'm going to get this mixed up because a lot of the stuff I, I, you know, my brain is connected to, my memory is connected to Street Fighter. Um, I don't mean to demean this game in any way, shape, or form. It's actually an amazing game. Iron Galaxy should be super proud of themselves. Microsoft should give them a million dollars and, I don't know, throw them a sexy party. But, um, yes. So these are, these are the things that we're doing here. Now, the linker. What are we going to do after a linker? Oh, we're going to do another auto-double. How about that? Oh, oh, that was a manual. I don't I have no idea how I did that. No idea. We're going to have to figure that one out. Um, okay, so you can do, that's interesting, so you can do an opener, an auto-double, a linker, an auto-double, a linker, an auto-double, a linker, an auto-double, until the guy spins out. Huh, and it has something to do with that meter over there. And that meter over there is called the KV meter. I don't know what KV stands for. I, they probably explained it season one, but I don't remember what it stands for. But what that means is if, what, well, what, what that does is, is as that builds color and it gets to red, if you don't finish the combo, your enemy is gonna blow out, which means they're gonna spin out. And you see how you got all that white damage up there that's left? That is all that damage that you could not, that, that could have been done. All right, that damage could have been done. All right, and the way to get that damage is to end the combo. And you get all that damage. So that's pretty sweet. We have, we have a way to be able to do combos. Right, and then we have a way to finish combos. All right, and then there are some dots on the bottom you'll see here, these squares. That seems to increase the severity of the ender. Jago is the king of manuals. He is plus on just about all of his attacks. He is, but he isn't the king of manuals. I would, well, I'm most comfortable doing manuals with Jago. Um, but they recently, and I mean recently by the beginning of season three, I believe they made the manual timing pretty much universal. Obviously, they probably couldn't do it perfectly. Um, but yeah, he is definitely a king at manuals. That is his bread and butter. Yeah, for sure. Not too difficult. And what is a manual? All right, so we did the auto-double, right? 
No problem. Auto double. What is a manual? A manual is we're going to hit him and then we're going to wait. And we're not going to put out an auto double. We're not going to just jam the button the minute this hits. Like the minute that hits, we're not going to do that. We're going to wait a sec and then we're going to input an attack. Boom. Up. Uh, Up. Uh. Boom. Oh my gosh. I'm just dropping it. There we go. Medium manual. Uh, so that was... I waited while Shadow Jago... Okay. While Shadow Jago was reeling back, I waited just long enough so I could sneak in a single medium attack. I can do a single light attack. Hmm. Heavy attacks I'm not. Let's see if I do a heavy... Because I'm doing a medium wind kick. Alright, so maybe that's not hitting him in the face hard enough. Yeah, maybe I gotta really hit him in the face. Let's hit him in the face with a fierce wind kick. Alright, that's giving me a little more time. No. Hmm. No. No. Oh, interesting. Huh. Probably I'm not inputting it exactly right. Because well, I can do a me I can do a light. Yeah. That's hard. That is not an easy thing to do. Yeah. It's not an easy thing to do. So why don't we uh, why don't we move on from that? I'll have to practice that. I'm not sure exactly where that has to come in. Does anybody know? Let's see. Does anybody know? There we go. There we go. Okay, so off of the heavy laser sword, I seem to have plenty of time to be able to do the the fierce or the heavy link the heavy manual. Uh, not from that distance. So distance does play into it because the attack's got to get there, right? Hmm. Now there's a heavy auto double. So that's the ma the manual. The manual allows you to do that. To basically forego the auto double and go right into a manual, which is a single hit. Now, why would you want to do that? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody want to tell me why I got to do it that way? Probably because I'm going to be screwing with people's timing. Oh, there's that word again. Fighting games and time. Fighting games and time. All right. Well, we're going to probably be closing this up in a sec. So, keyword here, fighting games and time. Uh, and I'm going to explain really quickly what this stage and what you're seeing on this stage. And why you're seeing it. So, we're going to go back to default. Um... These boxes that you see, and I put Jago there on purpose, there's, it's not, I'm not lying, uh, is exactly one average character width. Now by making these things universal, it makes it a lot easier for the designers and for the guys who are making this to kind of go, okay, if this guy's consistently occupying this much space, then I know I have to do X, Y, and Z. I assume it's a bunch of nerd speak with programming and modeling and sound and collisions and all that stuff. But we don't care about that. What we care about is that that is one character with average character with. As I said, I chose Jago because he is the most average character. And I don't mean average as in like he kind of wins and kind of loses. I mean average as far as his capabilities are pretty much the average of everybody's and he's doing a bit of everything everybody else can. Not the best that they can, but he is doing everything pretty good. So that's an average character width. So I know how far I am away from my opponent, and they know how far away I am from them. Uh, we ready? All right, so we are going to switch up to a Melakaya's toy box. Melakai? Melakai's toy box. And then I will be back to explain more of some fighting games, and I'm sure Robbie will be here, so he'll teach me how to play fighting games like a pro. So until then, boom! I will see you guys. Thank you for watching. Adios.
Good evening. I'm James Jerome, and welcome again to Mel Kaya's Toy Box. Tonight we're going to be doing a little show and tell, some things that I actually um, actually came across I already made. Uh, tonight we won't be actually painting. We're going to be showing some things that we've created already. All right, so bear with me if you will. Um, got my little Thundercat insignia here, deep down in my heart. I am TC, a straight Thundercat. Roar. Well, we've done, again, we've, we've taken the 3.75 little posable action figures, and I've actually done some picking and pull, painting, whatnot. Come up with your 80s versions of Thundercats. But uh, beyond that, we've actually been able to um, create some figures that was never actually generated on the cartoon or comics. And uh, just let our imaginations go a little wild with this thing. Um, those of you who are familiar, this is Lionel. Lionel is the Lord of the Thundercats. Okay. This is our dude right here. And Lionel actually, and what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to attempt to stand them all up the way they're actually standing on my shelves at my home. Um, what, I, what I would like to call the domino effect. They're all close to each other, so if one falls, they're all going to fall. I don't like the planks with not underneath their feet because it kind of limits the space. So Lionel stands here basically, the head of a Quinlan Voss, body of Cyclops, a couple little rubber bands around here to kind of give his, uh, his belt kind of like a defined you know, deal like mine here. Fall Shield coming from uh, Adam Warlock from Marvel Comics and Sword of Omens actually from the new makeup of Thundercats. It was a little small sword like this here if you see. So it just fits right into his claw shell perfectly. Just let it slide right there. Bam. Right there. Alright, so this is Lionel, Lord of the Thundercats. Now, he's one of the core group. So I'll bring up the core group first and then I'll show you basically all the extras that we've come up with over time. Alright? So here he is. Let me see if I can get him in a position where he won't fall. You can see him. Next, we have on a roster. Let's see here. What would be the better bet? Right here. Let's get him right there. Okay, cool. We're going to go with Tigra. Tigra's actually going to be pretty much a Wolverine remake. Now, it's funny because if you look at the uh, character again of Wolverine played by Hugh Jackman, they've managed to generate quite a few figures that have the uh, hairstyle. Of uh, Wolverine. Let me see. Here we go. Bum, bum, bum. Still getting used to our cameras here. All right. And there you have Tigra. Now I've given Tigra some shoes. I try to do a little switch up. You know, in the cartoon, back in the day, he basically had an open toe deal going on. But we gave him some shoes. All right. So you got Tigra right here. 80s version. Standing just a little lower than Lionel. Okay. Now, we got Panthro. All right. Got Panther right here. Panther's the man, strong, just the, the, the little Panther cat. You know what I mean? This dude right here, basically, I took some rubber bands actually, and I actually dockered him up right here where he can have his garments kind of sticking out. Didn't put the spikes on him, but give him some indication where the spikes would go. Give him his insignia. Okay, this is another room. This is a, another version actually of a Wolverine remake with the head of uh, uh, Nick Fury <laughs> from the Avengers. That's giving you Panthro. All right. I'm going to stand him here. And then we got the fourth of the core group. We got Chitara. Okay. Chitara pretty much was a... Basically, I just took her. And if I just have a bunch of extra figures of the... Um, what's the character? Marvel uh, Jean Grey. So I actually just took her, repainted her, and gave her your look. She's pretty hot. I like it. I like it. You like it? I like it. Where we at? All right. So let me do this here. Put your tar right there. You see? All right. Now, according to our comics, where actually where there was a section where Mumra actually did quite a bit of uh, capturing Thundarians and whatnot, Wily Kit and Wily Cat grew to be adults. So what I'm about to show you right now, they're no longer kittens. They are full-blown adults. And this is her. This is going to be Wiley Kit. I'm going to move right here. That's the kit. That's the kit. 
you would say kind of similar to Chitara. Well, she is. Same mode, same make, different makeup. And this is going to be Wiley Cat. Can you see the? Gotcha. That's where I was at. So let's do this here. Look right here. All right. Okay. The sweet, beautiful. Thank you. Remedy. Remedy to the problem. So these guys actually, they already shined a bit. So we're gonna put them over here. Let them rock. Okay. So this is Tigra. Panther over here. All right. Cool. So now, Wiley Kid, basically, as the adult, with her twin brother, Wiley Cat. See that there? Yes, sir. Change up on the garments a little bit, you know what I mean? Going for the true warriors of what they are. Now, Wiley Cat always had a problem standing up on his own. Won't tonight. We got this. So this is it. Right now, I got some cloth on him, actually. Actually, picking and pulling from some Jedi figures. <laughs> I came up with his make. All right, cool. So here we are. We're almost done with the core group. Now, if you remember anything about the storyline, <clears throat> back in the 80s on the cartoon, there were three Thundarians that were found to be survivors. Along with these guys, we just didn't know it. And that would be none other than Bengali. A white Bengal tiger. Okay. Here's Bengali right here. Doing his thing. Same thing with him. Added some rubber bands, whatnot. Took another Cyclops mold. Anakin Skywalker head. Yes, sir. Painting them up. Yeah, our white Bengal tiger. All right. Got Bengali right here. The blacksmith. The blacksmith. Okay. One here. And he's standing. All right. Now what I've done here, I'm gonna pull in Linkso. Linkso. You guys remember Linkso was an older guy. He actually had the beard. He was blind, whatnot. I managed to take Linkso back in the days of his youth, throwing him on the Thundercat Force. We can get a little more into the action, whatnot. So you know, you see Linkso right now with the whole full duty belt. You know what I mean? Got his bandana. Got his youth. Got his yokes. He's ready to get in there. Whoop some Plundarian and mummified butt. All right, so that's what it is. Linkso right here. Okay. That's Linkso. The ears. <clears throat> this part here. <clears throat> excuse me. This part here was really difficult to come up with. Took some pieces of a paintbrush. I spiked them up real good. And crazy glued them on his ears. And I took more crazy glue and actually perked them. And just basically had to stand there. Uh, without actually holding them and just because I would have got stuck. I've done that quite often. But um actually held them up and uh, let let them dry on his own. And you got Linkso. Linkso. Linkso's the man. See those big ears? He can hear real good. Alright. And then our third one here was Pumira. I've actually made Pumira kind of bodacious. You can see her here. He's in there. Umaira basically generated this point was a <laughs> this was She-Hawk actually. That's why she's so thick. But she's great. Umaira is still swift and strong. Again, introducing the Thundercats at a whole new angle. They're really getting there doing some business. Not discrediting what was already created. Because it's beautiful. I love it. All right. Now, here's some recreates, uh, basically some, uh, some originals that actually we're seeing. This is just one of the, a few of the shrine that sits at home of new ideas as far as Thundercats goes along. What we have here is Carseus. Carseus is a uh, pilot and a heck of a gunman. He's a caracal, okay? So he's fully locked and loaded. This guy right now plays a major, huge role in Thundercats uh, and, and, and um, controlling an aircraft known as the Thunder Roar, okay? And he's one of the, uh, what I would like to call a special division of one of five 
called SWAT caps. Guys are real handy with the artillery. All right, so here's your man Karsis. And his make was, this is the head of Thor actually, a Thor figure. And this body actually came from, I'm gonna sound ridiculous trying to even quote this guy's name, but he was in a six pack where they finally released the figure Rogue. And he kind of came in and he was on, um, he has a real ridiculous look, but I seen his body frame and I was like, oh, this is definitely a go. So, you know, he stands a little tall in height, whatnot. But ladies and gentlemen, Arceus. Arceus is the man. And right here, we have Proteus. Proteus is a leopard. And this guy here actually is a uh, silent stalker. What I've done with this guy, deal with the little Kempo sticks, martial arts expert, and like Panthro, I gave him the open toe look rather than Tigra. Switch it up a bit. And so this is Proteus. So what I found one day in my creations, I took a Submariner. You guys probably already guessed that. But yeah, it's a Submariner. Perfect ears, perfect eyebrows and everything for the cat look. I just transformed him a bit and made him into a leopard. This is Proteus. The leopard. Alright, cool. Let's set him here. Alright. Now let's do this here. <clears throat> I want to introduce to you Tigarana. Tigarana is our female tigress. Okay. She's one of the actual second of the SWAT cat. She's good with the artillery. You can see the little guns on her back. Okay. A little mini skirt, whatnot. She's swift. And she's quick. This here was a remake from um, Supergirl from the DC Crisis series. I managed to just pull her cape off and just said, okay, you know what? We're gonna make a female tigress, and here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Tiga Rana. Her and Tiger, I don't believe there's any relation, but you never know. Thundera, small world. Speaking of relations, what right here, I have Lila. Lila's kind of similar to her brother, Lionel. So this is a lioness, and her name is Lila. Nice little hair blowing in the wind. Represents, she kind of looks just like Lionel a little bit. Okay, we, that's what we're doing here. Lila actually just sits in royalty right now. There's really no um, role that she's played as far as what she's doing on the battlefield or not, but nevertheless, she's Thundarian. He's a lioness, and as you know, in most cases in the, the world of nature, the lionesses are the ones who do the hunting. She's no pushover. You will kick thy butt. All right. Chitara, not mentioned too much as, well as far as her relatives would not, but we managed to actually give her a brother. This is Chitaro. Check him out. Chitaro sits here in all black. What I want to do with him is I want to kind of give him that Jedi edge, you know. Right now, as you can kind of see, he, he's holding a lightsaber right there in his hand. <laughs> holding a lightsaber. And he has his ponytail. He has long hair. Ponytail kind of represents that of a tail of, a, of an actual cheetah. So if you look, you have the spots. But at the end of his tail, you have the stripes. And he actually has the, uh, the tear ducts of a cheetah. That actually allows them to see in uh, dense heat and bright lights. It's day hunters in the African plains. All right, so there you go. You have Chitaro. Chitaro is the man, the brother of Chitara. And what I want to introduce to you now, last of my Thundercat series, what we're going to be showing you tonight is the two twins, Chloe and Cleo. Chloe and Cleo are actual snow leopards. Okay. And here we are. Pull him here. Chloe's a man, has a dark edge, got that katana going on. You know what I mean? Whip out in a minute. He keep the lid. Kind of like he's in with the ladies. Real swift dude. And he got a sister. She's a twin. It's Chloe. Back on Thundera, she was a rocker. We left her guitar at home. I was gonna show you that, but put in the box but yeah right here had an awesome rock band on the battlefield she has a sword 
She'll dice you in half with. Don't care about much. She's got the whole, you know, Teen Titan Raven thing going on, you know. There she goes. Chloe and Cleo. So yeah. Here we go. Now, if you look at this guy here, I didn't really elaborate where I got her from. She was actually a Star Wars figure, actually. And the head idea came from the uh, one of the first releases of Storm. Storm had her mohawk. So basically, picking off the head, adding to another body and some paint, creativity. Yes, sir. Got yourself a snow leopard. Cleo here basically was the, no, no, there was no changes to him other than actually adding the sword to his back and the black paint with the, uh, the white pale skin with the leopard spots and whatnot. But this was the, one of the first original releases of Flash. If you remember Flash when he had the actual metallic hat and he had, uh, I believe it was a red top and some blue bottoms and uh, a couple little wings that actually stuck out from here. But we just carved those out and gave him a pimp look. Pimped him out to be Cleo. All right. Now, one thing I want to show is what I can tie this into right now. Right now, I'm, I'm reading a, um, a comic book. It's, I believe, five to six books long uh, where He-Man and uh, the Thundercats actually meet up. And, um, Don, I mentioned this before, where He-Man, right here, my friend. Bring him in, bring him in. This is a remake, actually, of another uh, Wolverine body at the head of an Anakin Skywalker. And that's pretty much it. A couple pieces of plastic pieces off of a bottle cap. <laughs> a couple things here that actually work as his vest as well as his belt. Okay, and his sword actually, this sword actually was one of the two from the um, Rattaro figure of the 80s release of Thundercats, where he had two dagger lights. So I actually took it, taken it and made it uh, a power sword. It's gonna be one of the things you can just pull out the sheath here. You can see it. By the power of Grayskull, I have the power. He-Man likes cats, as we all know. His little friend, I'm gonna leave him right here. We're gonna actually bring out his little friendly sidekick. Guy was known as Cringer. He liked to cringe. Now we know him as Battle Cat. All right. Nothing special and spectacular about this. It was just a big tiger figure that I actually found from Michael's hobby shop. Taking the time out to go ahead and just paint him up green and gold. Actually taking the uh, the saddle from a uh, a random Griffin figure that I found in the Toys R Us. So I didn't detach it. Actually gave him a saddle. And if you actually take him man off his plank here, he can actually ride Mr. Battle Cat. Well, there you are. There you go. There you go. Power of Grayskull. We rocking out. Where we at? Where we at? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. Now, with the likes of He-Man, we will not leave out the villain that he so hates. He also hates him, actually. Skeletor. Skeletor is going to be right here. Now this guy right here is, when you say consolidation of different figures, he pretty much takes the cake. That's what I managed to do with this guy here. Took the cape of a, uh, let's turn around, let's get a look at his face. Took the cape of a Thor figure. Actually, stand corrected, it was from, uh, what's the guy's name? Doctor Strange, that's him, as if I didn't know, right? With a Wolverine body. His head cloak is actually from that of Wicked. Wicked from the Ewoks of Star Wars. And if you look at his face, what you see is a uh, skull with fangs. His skull actually came from a stump that Blade was standing on, indicating he had just defeated and killed a bunch of vampires, leaving their skulls there. So his skull managed right now is actually just pushed back on the top of a neck base of this figure. And um, if you were to take the cloak off right now, you would see that there was really no backing, but you didn't even have to know that. You didn't have to know that. But there it is, the Skeletor. All right, that's Skeletor right there. 
I'm gonna leave him over here. Now, one of my favorites, it's like original creation, is based on one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. The character he pulled up and the character he created for himself for the public and went big time with was just awesome. And I'm sure a lot would agree. God bless his soul, that would be Jim Helwig, um, as known as the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, with the Ultimate Warrior, what I've managed to do is actually generate this guy and uh, basically recreate. So right here we have what he's known as the warrior. Okay, that, uh, basically I caught, right before they actually yanked him off the shelves, a bunch of steel cage match figures. I looked at his physique, had to have it. So what I did, took him in, went to Michaels, got some yarn and whatnot, tied around his arms as the war bands. So, you know, these things right here are just totally flimsy, you know, he's blowing the wind, whatever. Added some warm paint, put the war paint on his face, okay, and gave him a sword. Basically, this guy has a lot of similarity to He-Man, um, pretty much where the idea came from to go ahead and branch out on the warrior's powers and whatnot. But he has a sword, and he, uh, he also has a sidekick, and uh, I'll bring him out in a quick second. Yeah, I need that, I mean, this sucks. <laughs> And right there. See, I'm having a hard time with this. <laughs> I want to go left, it goes right. It's all good. But there you have the ultimate warrior. His sidekick is going to be known as the guy we call Warmane. Warmane is no tiger, but he's a lion. He has the mane of a lion, of course. That's giving him the name Warman. So, same idea with him that I did with Battle Cat. Actually, got this saddle, random figure. Put it on there. Now you have the Ultimate Warrior and Warman. Here we are. Can we see that? There it is. Roar. All right, there we have it. Now this is just one of many, there's so many creations that I'm gonna be bringing in and sharing. Um, but uh, yeah, these are my guys. And uh, what I wanna do is show some other deals right now that I have yet to de-box um, because they look pretty cool when they're hanging up. But uh, know about the Justice League, the Injustice figures actually uh, came out with a video game based on the hit video game. These are the Injustice League figures. Right here you have Green Arrow in a duo pack with Deathstroke. Where are we at? Can you see that? And I'm not just going to debox them just yet because like I said they look pretty cool as they're hanging but eventually we will. And they'll join their brothers standing on their own two feet, some shelf. We have these two here. And then we got them around. Solomon Grande with Wonder Woman. All right. And there we are. Solomon Grande, Wonder Woman. Very good. All right, cool. So I was looking at these one day. It's my little common local hobby shop. I found these bad boys. <laughs> and they come with tumbling. Like we said, domino effect. One falls, they all fall. It's all good. <laughs> cool. And then right here, we have Superman in a duo pack with Nightwing. Okay. So this is pretty cool right here. You know, this is uh what I like about these is like the, the DC Crisis figures that actually released. Pretty much the same measurement of these DC Warriors right now. Um, they were kind of limited as far as how they were posed. Um, and if you notice when um, when the, um, Marvel started releasing all their figures, where a lot of these ideas come from, they had the certain joints, they had certain body types that was, you know, it was pretty much a little different from the DC Crisis figures. These here, now you have the DC Crisis, you have the DC figures actually, that has, has the same type of uh, body types as Marvel. 
which is pretty cool. Because now when I debox them, they're actually going to all stand into a perfect harmony with each other. What I got here, check it out. Got Catwoman, Doomsday. I don't think the plastic actually is doing it justice, but you can actually see from the side. It's a little better for what they are. But yeah, man, they're actually giving uh, Doomsday got this little pimp look. He got a ponytail, you know, it kind of looks like, you know, dude, like, like, are you a monster? Like, trying to be the ladies' man, what's the deal? But he's the business, he's the business. There it is, Doomsday, Catwoman. All right. Four box. And here we have Batman. The dual pack with the Joker. Now I must admit, the way they actually have them set in the plastic the packages already, they look pretty cool. You know, I don't think I can do any better with them actually just taking them out of the box and standing them up somewhere. So, you know, I just might leave them in. But here you go. Batman, Joker. Alright. Next. We have Raven in dual pack with Flash. I'm loving it. I thought to remake Raven one time, and actually, this is the, an idea that I would have come up with. It really, just looks more like into the character. Um, DC Crisis actually has her, the Raven figure. She's standing just a little shorter than what she is, She's still purpled out. She's fully clothed. All right, this right here, Flash, Raven. In there. Okay. Next, we have Cyborg, Harley Quinn. All right. Pretty cool. In the direction where they actually took Harley Quinn, they're kind of almost similar to what you know. Harley has a bunch of different looks. The new movie, loved it. Suicide Squad. Kind of similar. Cyborg. Then it did better. Ladies and gentlemen, Harley Quinn Cyborg. <laughs> right. Next, we have Aquaman, a dual pack with Black Adam. All right. This is pretty cool. Actually, I took an, um, the DC Crisis series never really released an Aquaman, at least not to my knowledge. So what I did is I took an extra... Shazam and actually made a Aquaman that was pretty much generated off of the original idea back in the day of Super Friends where he just had the orange top, the green bottoms right here. But actually taking out of the box just a little bit, put a little more creativity on him. Loving it. Black Adam, feel the man. Ha <laughs> ha. Ladies and gentlemen, Black Adam with Aquaman. Let's put them here. Last but not least, we have Green Lantern. Comic-Con edition, Green Lantern. Actually in a dual pack with this guy here, with Saint Walker. He's a blue, blue lantern. Now until I actually seen this figure, actually and seen this box, never knew about a blue lantern. Never knew about the blue lantern, but that's cool. You learn something every day. This is here, this right here. So limited edition of 3000. Al Jordan, Green Lantern. Saint Walker, the blue lantern. All right, ladies and gentlemen. That is the deal. We got all these pretty plastics on the table, all these Thundercats right now, but keep in mind, I'm the one. True Thundercat. That's the man right there. All right? I'm child at heart. That's what we do all day, every day. Right, all right. Like Anakin. Yeah, it does look like Anakin. Which one looks like Anakin? There's a couple here. The He Man? <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. And then we had a. Uh, actually, if you look back at our uh, our Wiley Cat figure here, this was actually a uh, spinoff of Wolverine. Actually, when he was older, known as Old Man Logan. So if you can really look in his face, you can see that he actually has a little more of a. Well, they tried to give him the wrinkles, whatever, but I cleaned it all up, kind of like with paint, would not give him his uh, feline look. That's an, that's another Wolverine kick. Dead giveaway is the hairstyle. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Now, what do we have here? Okay, cool. Well, that's the business. That's pretty much what we have today. 
And I um, thank you for your time. Please do come again. what he referred to. Yeah, there's Anakin. Hmm? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much all right there. Anakin, Anakin, twins. Yep. It's James Jerome, Melchiah's Toy Box. I'll be bringing more of this stuff in. Yeah, it's gonna be mind blowing, man. It's just a tip of the iceberg. On your own two feet. There you go.